Hi everyone, Namaskar, this is Dr. Manikant. Welcome to my health channel. Well, winter may be on the verge of ending, but not the swine flu. Seasonal influenza H1N1, popularly known as swine flu, has been spreading like a wildfire this winter in India, especially in states like Rajasthan, Gujarat, Haryana and Delhi. According to NCDC, National Center for Disease Control Government of India, more than 6,700 people have been tested positive for H1N1 virus and 226 people have already died. It may be just a tip of iceberg. There can be many undetected and unreported cases. Number of swine flu cases may rise dramatically in future if we don't contain it in time. Influenza H1N1 is also prevalent and spreading in other parts of the world like in North America, Europe and Asia. World Health Organization estimates that seasonal influenza may result in 290 to 650,000 deaths each year. There have been two pandemics involving influenza H1N1 virus in past, one in 1918 known as Spanish flu, which killed about 50 to 100 million people worldwide. It is thought to be one of the deadliest pandemics in human history. Second one occurred in 2009, killing more than 200,000 people in more than 200 countries. Since then, limited outbreaks have been occurring in various parts of the world. There have been an outbreak in 2015 in India, which affected more than 33,000 people and killed more than 2,000. Now, let's see some facts about this influenza H1N1 virus. H1N1 virus is a subtype of influenza A virus, which is an orthomixer virus. It contains glycoproteins, hemagglutinin, and neuraminidase. Influenza A virus has several subtypes which are leveled according to H number for the type of hemagglutinin and N number for neuraminidase. There are about 18 different known H antigens and 11 different N antigens. Among the subtypes of influenza, H1N1, H1N2, and H3N2 are currently circulating among humans. Technically, the term swine flu refers to influenza in pigs. Occasionally, the pigs transmit influenza virus to people, mainly the farmers and veterinarians. These people infected with the swine flu passes the infection to others. So when an influenza virus that normally circulate in the swine is detected in a human being, then it's called variant influenza virus. By the way, those who love eating pork can continue to enjoy it because swine influenza have not been found to be transmitted by eating properly cooked pork. Now let's go and take an expert opinion from Dr. Bharat Gopal, the senior consultant and head of respiratory medicine department, Maharaja Agrasen Hospital and director of National Chest Center, New Delhi. Uh, sir, thank you so much for sparing your uh, valuable time. Uh, as we all know that there is a surge of swine flu cases or H1N1 cases uh, in India this winter. So can you please uh, tell our viewers uh, how people can differentiate between the swine flu and uh, common cold? It's a pleasure to be on your channel, Dr. Banika. And I feel that it's a very, very important question. Mm -hmm. Because not only the H1N1 which is creating a problem, it's mm -hmm. also the common cold which is there. Okay. So it becomes very important to not panic and understand mm -hmm. that there is a difference between both of them. Mm -hmm. Even the viewers can differentiate on their own because mm -hmm. classically if you have H1, you will have very high grade fever. Yes, yes. With body aches okay. and you will have cough with breathlessness and mm -hmm. some blood in the sputum. Mm -hmm. While the common cold would have more of rhinitis, sneezing, the fevers are not that high. So this would actually help you differentiate that, oh, I may be suffering from an H1N1 mm -hmm. and I need to go and consult a facility or not. Okay. So this is how these small simple things which if our uh, viewers actually realize, mm -hmm. it will also help decrease the panic which is there in the uh, community at this time and the hospitals are overloaded so we okay. want help from the community also yes. that yes. they don't start rushing at every sneeze okay. right so that is also important that the message which we have to give okay so sir uh, when people or the patients should visit a doctor or physician I think that's another very important question and it's also important which patient should come and visit. Which patient should come so, so there are two parts to that question. A, mm -hmm. which are the patients who should be more vigilant okay. in this time when with a common cold or with an H1N1. Mm -hmm. See these are the patients who are already having some illnesses. Mm -hmm. Suppose somebody has a cardiac problem, somebody mm -hmm. has asthmatic, somebody mm -hmm. has COPD, mm -hmm. patients of diabetes. Patients who have had some renal transplant or some bone marrow transplant, patients who are on the immunosuppressants mm -hmm. for rheumatoid arthritis and all these illnesses, 
they have more chances of complications when they suffer from mm -hmm. an H1N1 or a common cold. So once you have H1N1 in these patients, mm -hmm. they will have more complicated phase. Mm -hmm. So these are the patients who should be very vigilant. If they have these type of symptoms, mm -hmm. they should visit the uh, physician. physician or hospital. Right. But what about the common public? Yes. Now somebody who doesn't have these symptoms. Okay. Then each of them should not be rushing to us. Yes, yes. That is also important to okay. allay the fear, that fear. Yeah. So the important thing is that if you have these symptoms, but mm -hmm. then you become breathless, you have mm -hmm. bluish discoloration of your lips, you have mm -hmm. bluish discoloration of your nails, your fingers. Mm -hmm. So these are symptoms that maybe you are losing oxygen. Mm -hmm. You become very breathless. You have blood in your cough. Right. So okay. these are symptoms where mm -hmm. then you don't have to stay at home. You have to consult your physician and let him decide if he needs testing or he does it require treatment. Oh, that's a very important points, Dosa. So and uh, about the treatment part, how you can treat the H1N1 or swine flu? Because there are a lot of misconceptions among the public and the society. As I said mm -hmm. that uh, we have to follow the government guidelines. So okay. once we follow mm -hmm. the government guidelines and mm -hmm. uh, we the only drug which is available as of now is what is called as Ostromavir or Tamiflu Tamiflu. by the common name. So it's I think government has a good stockpile now this year, okay. unlike last few years where the, there was a, a decrease in the availability and it used to create a lot of panic. Nowadays there is enough medicines available so there is no need to panic or stock those medicines. So you get these medicines. It is to be given for patients who are sicker, just to be on, just as a layman, if somebody wants to understand, the sicker you are, the more important it is to start it on time. Right. Should we wait for the test results to come or we should be so on the basis as per, of as per the WHO and the national guidelines, mm -hmm. if you have a comorbidity and if you are sick, mm -hmm. then you need to start medicines even when the test results are not available. But if you are not in that category then mm -hmm. neither you want to get a test done nor okay. you want to get a treatment okay. because these are most of the cases will be self-limiting in healthy individuals okay. right so that is uh, also a mm -hmm. important thing that the public has to realize what about the precautions or preventions and the vaccinations that can be done for you have asked mm -hmm. almost two three questions yes so, yes, yes. so uh -huh. a what are the precautions at the time mm -hmm. of the epidemic or mm -hmm. the time when the swine flu mm -hmm. is so high mm -hmm. i think one of the very common precautions is going to be to stay away if you are symptomatic yes. so that you don't spread it to others Other people. because it's an aerosol based uh, so you are coughing and you're mm -hmm. sneezing okay. unfortunately a lot of us don't have those mm -hmm. classical cough etiquettes yes. so we stand in the metro we stand in the lines and we cough on the others and that's how it, is it actually spreads, it spreads. so mm -hmm. if you have illness stay mm -hmm. indoors till you are fine mm -hmm. number one fine. if you can't then mm -hmm. use a mask mm -hmm. the classical three layered mask three -layered is available mask. Mm -hmm. Right, or you can use an N95 like yeah, this, uh, but the important thing is not to wear it like this. Yes. So you have to wear it properly, you have to fit it properly so there is no leakage mm -hmm. and that is the, that is that way it can prevent the spread from one person to the other. Mm -hmm. So that is about the prevention aspect. Yes, prevention. Obviously you have to eat well, you have to have a healthy diet yes. and all those things yeah. go take, take without staying yes. and take rest, take right. adequate fluids. These are for any virus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then the other thing is how to prevent it. So mm -hmm. prevention and therein where mm -hmm. lies the government agencies to also yes. step in. Yeah. We don't government do, has a very important role. Yeah, to so play. government has a very important role to mm -hmm. prevent this. Yeah. So yeah. if you educate the people about the vaccines available, yeah. which may not be hundred percent, mm -hmm. but even if they go from sixty to eighty percent of prevention, mm -hmm. I think it is very important, especially for those high risk groups. Yes. If we cannot do it for the whole public, at mm -hmm. least we can prevent complications in those high risk groups. Mm -hmm. So yes, if yes. they can, it's taken right time, that is mm -hmm. maybe at the change of season in August, mm -hmm. September, mm -hmm. then it peaks at this time. So mm -hmm. these winters you can have a lot of prevention. Lot of in prevention. fact, in yeah. my experience, mm -hmm. for last almost 15, 16 years of mm -hmm. using flu vaccine and mm -hmm. then influenza mm -hmm. along with H1N1 vaccines for last seven, eight years, mm -hmm. what I've found is that a lot of patients do well and the admissions are less in our patients who pre-existing respiratory and cardiac diseases. Yes. So yes. it goes without saying that it is something which we have to educate the public about. Mm -hmm. And if the government can step in and give this, mm -hmm. then the monetary aspect is also taken care of for people who cannot afford it. Yes. Right. Yes. Information should be disseminated. That's right. Because we have to be a lot of people, uh, you won't, uh, yeah. you will be surprised when patients mm -hmm. come to us, yeah. they say, I don't eat pork. Yes. So by the name swine yeah, flu, yeah. I mean, so that's the mystery we are saying uh, that, that it's for people who eat non-vegetarian food. Yes, yes, so they uh, don't understand, it's just yeah. like a common cold. Common it is going to spread from one person to the other. Thank you so much sir for your valuable time and giving such uh, useful information for the public. I think it should be disseminated across yeah. through millions of viewers. Yeah. Through your thank, thank you so much.
Well, that was a very productive discussion. Now let's summarize it. Swine flu or H1N1 is a type A influenza virus. It may affect all age groups, but globally incidence is higher in young children and those above 65 years of age. Pregnant women health workers and persons with comorbid conditions such as lung disease, heart disease, liver disease, kidney disease, blood disorders, diabetes, and immunocompromised persons are at higher risk. How swine flu or H1N1 is transmitted? Well, the transmission is airborne from person to person through large droplets generated by coughing or sneezing. These droplets when inhaled are highly contagious. The other mode of transmission include direct contact by touching a contaminated object or surface and close contact like hand shaking. The incubation period that is infection to onset of symptoms is about 1 to 4 days but typically it's two days. Viral shedding can begin before the symptom onset and peaks on day one of the symptoms. What symptoms do people have when they are infected with H1N1 or swine flu? The hallmark of swine flu is the sudden and rapid onset of symptoms. Uh, this may include fever, chills, cough, sore throat, runny nose, watery eyes, body ache, headache, lack of appetite, fatigue, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. In some severe cases, there can be difficulty in breathing, pain or pressure in the chest, sudden dizziness and confusion, etc. Fever and systemic symptoms typically last about 3 days, occasionally 5 to 8 days, and it gradually diminishes. Cough and malaise may persist for more than 2 weeks, and the full recovery may take 1 to 2 weeks or even longer. There can be complications in the swine flu. In infants and children, complications may include sinus or ear infections, viral and bacterial pneumonia, bronchiolitis, dehydration, febrile seizures, sepsis-like syndrome, rhabdomyolysis, encephalopathy, encephalitis, and cardiac complications such as myocarditis and pericarditis. Toxic shock syndrome and sudden death may also occur. In adults and elderly, Exacerbation of the chronic illness may occur. Respiratory complications like bronchitis, sinusitis, pneumonia, and bacterial co-infection may occur. So how can we diagnose swine flu? Well, the confirmation of H1N1 infection is done through real-time RT-PCR or isolation of virus in culture. What is the treatment of H1N1 infection or swine flu? Antiviral drug oseltamivir is recommended for treatment. The adult dose is 75 mg twice a day for 5 days. Other supportive therapy include intravenous fluids, parenteral nutrition, oxygen therapy, antibiotics for secondary infection, paracetamol is prescribed for fever, body ache and headache. Aspirin is strictly contraindicated in H1N1 or influenza patient due to its potential to cause Rice syndrome. Patients with severe pneumonia and acute respiratory failure may require mechanical ventilator support. Prevention is always better than cure, so how can we prevent swine flu infection? Vaccination is an important tool to prevent infection and severe outcomes caused by influenza viruses. Anyone 6 months of age or older can receive flu vaccine. Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India, recommends vaccination of high-risk groups with quadrivalent influenza vaccine. The groups are healthcare workers like doctors, nurses, paramedics, etc., pregnant women irrespective of duration of pregnancy, and persons with chronic illness such as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, bronchial asthma, heart disease, liver disease, kidney disease, blood disorders, diabetes, cancer, and those who are immunocompromised. Other preventive measures are like trying to avoid close contact with sick people, avoid crowded areas, washing your hands often with the soap and water especially after you cough or sneeze. You can also use alcohol-based hand cleaners or sanitizers. Covering your nose and mouth with a tissue when you cough or sneeze. Avoid touching your eyes, nose or mouth. Wear a mask if you are traveling or around a large group of people. There are two types of masks which are recommended. They are triple layer surgical mask and N95 respirator. Drink adequate amount of water and take balanced diet. It was all about swine flu or H1N1 infection. Well, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, share, and hit the like button. And do write in comment section about which health topics or diseases that you want me to talk. Wish you all good health. See you again. Take care.